Good morning, everybody. You are in the right place. Welcome back to the Organizing Expert interview series. And I am going to jump over to Facebook quickly to connect our Facebook live stream like I always do. So let's make sure our Facebook community can be a part of our conversation as well. I'm so excited about today. So excited Adam is here. Yeah, that's two of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. It looks like we're all connected over on Facebook. Hello, everybody. I love seeing where everyone is from. So feel free to let us know in the chat area where you are. Um, just so excited to have you guys here today. And I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Samantha Pregenzer, in case you were not here Last week during the series, I'm a professional organizer based in the Bay Area, and I'm also the organizer behind the Simply Organized Instagram feed and the blog. In my organizing business, I help stressed out homeowners and families simplify through decluttering and organizing, and I love to create and build systems using tools, and I love anything involving home improvement. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you would know that. I'm also a field editor with Better Homes and Gardens. And this series idea began after stay-at-home orders were implemented across the country. I was encouraging my online community to make the most of their time at home by tackling a range of organizing and home projects that don't always get our time or attention because there just is never enough time, right? And this didn't only apply to home projects. I'm also encouraging everyone to invest in ourselves during this time. And while sharing ideas and content, I received a lot of questions and feedback. The how do I get started? Getting started is always the most difficult step, no matter what we are attempting to do. And then the next question was always, well, how do I do it the right way once I do get started? And many of these questions are best answered by the experts. So I reached out to my professional organizer community to find them for you. In case you were not here last week, you are still able to go back and watch those replays, by the way. I had five days of interviews with exceptional experts in the organizing field. We spoke about backing up important documents, organizing children's artwork, closet organization. We covered Amanda Kuzak's five P's for maintaining that beautifully organized space. And we spoke with Karen Cruzan, licensed psychotherapist, about how to manage our anxiety while at home. The interviews resonated with more than 700 registered attendees. You guys totally blew me away. So I've decided to continue the series with about one to two interviews per week for the duration of stay at home orders. In the Bay Area, we received word just this week that we will continue staying home through the end of May. So I'm looking forward to continuing my own long list of home projects, I'm going to be creating a lot more online content. I'm working on my business and I am going to continue sharing these incredible experts with you each week. And I hope that you'll stick around. I did want to mention, I know I've already said this quite a bit and also in the chat feed, but if you have a question, please leave it in the ask a question feature at the bottom of the page. We don't want your question to get lost in the chat area. And I love seeing you guys have, you know, communicate with one another and answer each other's questions and offer support over there. That's awesome. But I just want to make sure we don't miss your question. You can also upvote a question. So if it's your question that you were thinking about asking or somebody else asked something and you're like, oh my gosh, yes, I want to know the answer to that. Make sure that you vote on it so we know it's important to cover. Today, today, we are hitting a pain point that I would say most of us struggle with. It's all the photos, the digital photos, the printed photos, the home videos. In each home that I organize, I see the bins and the boxes of photos. I also see the empty wall frames propped up against the wall that are just waiting to be filled with a photo and hung. And at the very foundation, we just need to know how to organize these. And how do we get started if you have a huge volume? You know, if you have your own photos and you have photos that have been handed down to you from family members, you're living with somebody and your partner has a lot of photos as well. 
How do we make it easy and make the process easy to maintain moving forward? This, this is just, Adam, this is just a few questions I have. I have many more, yeah. but I had, I had to find the expert to help us answer these questions. And guess what? His name is Adam Pratt, and I am so grateful to have him with us today. Adam is a professional photo organizer, and he works with families to scan their photos, convert their home movies, and organize their digital photos. He lives in Chicago, and he works with clients all across the country, organizing millions of photos every year. I recently connected with him on LinkedIn, and I knew he'd be the guy for us to talk with today on this very important topic. So I would like to welcome you today. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate I'm it. I'm so excited to have you. Absolutely. Well, thanks for hosting this series. When I heard about it a couple of weeks ago, I thought super cool. And then even better that I got an invite to join you. So thank you. Um, so excited to have you. Yeah. So I have a few slides to share. Uh, I, this won't be boring PowerPoint. It's going to be pretty quick, but I think it'll be helpful for everybody to understand kind of the goal and where we're headed and how to get there. Um, I, as a person, I'm very minimalist. Like people come in our house and they say it looks like Ikea or whatever, um, which may not be your style, that's okay, but we don't have a lot of stuff. The one exception to that is my photos and my cameras are really important to me. And I think that's important because, not because of the stuff, but because they connect us with people and memories and experiences in a different way than other things do, right? And so mm -hmm. I think this work to preserve and organize and be able to share your photos is really important. And I think it's ironic that photos uh, for most of us are very stressful. They're pretty kind of annoying and they're not fun. Uh, they they can be a source of anxiousness because we can't find them. You know, it's gonna be graduation for some of us and people wanna make posters and celebrate. And you're like, I don't even know where to start. Where do I find this mm. stuff? Mm -hmm. um, it can also be nerve wracking to know, like, where is it? Is it on my phone? Is it on my computer? Is it on that dead laptop? Is it in the cloud? What is the cloud? Like, <laughs> um, it can be a little stressful, right? So Very so stressful, very. Yeah, so that's where I'm coming from. I see this all the time. Let me start with a couple of slides, and I think this will help set the framework. Um, okay, now, you should be able to... Yeah, you should have access and be able to do that, right? Yep. This is the first time we're having. Is that coming through okay? Come in. Let's see. Let me make that the focus screen. Yeah. There you go. Is that coming through? Yeah. Let us know, you guys, if you can see his slide as the main image there, because this is the first time on Crowdcast that I'm having someone else share their screen. I like trying new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got a little yeah, it looks good. There. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, let me go through these slides. Here's the thing. These projects are big. I mean, you've been acquiring photos for probably decades or depending on where they're coming from, maybe literally generations. I have worked on photos for clients spanning well over 100 years, maybe actually about 140 years is as far back as I go. And it's a lot of photos. And so it took wow. you a while to accumulate these. It will take you a while to get them organized. Um, it's going to be a big project. And so because of that, I wanna do two things. One, I wanna make sure you have a clear sense of where you're headed. You've got that goal in mind. And with that mm -hmm. goal in mind, then that will serve as your motivation because you're gonna need some motivation to keep going. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I think is really key is this is tedious work. Whether you have somebody do it or you do it, scanning photos is tedious, right? Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, my hope for you guys is you only do it once, right? What I mean by that is I've had clients come to me and they say, hey, I found this online company and they scanned all my photos for 20 cents a piece. And then I, I kind of feel bad because I say, well, yeah, they scanned them, but they did a terrible job and the resolution's so low, you can't even reprint them. So we, get it, we have to do this over again, like if you want to do it right. Right, and you really want to be able to hold them and share them and and preserve them and print them and and so if you're going to do all this, I just want to do it right the first time up front, um, mm -hmm. and I'll give you some steps to to think about that. Mm -hmm. So let, let me let me click through these real quick. My what I do in my business at Chaos to Memories, uh, Sam mentioned three main areas. I'll do a lot of digital photos. 
I scan and organize a lot of physical photos. And this can be done, just so you know, this can be done with all photo formats. Most people think only the prints can be scanned, but actually you can mm -hmm. scan slides and negatives, weird formats, old stuff from your grandparents, oh. whatever. All of it can be scanned um, and preserved. And then the last big category, and interestingly enough, I'm doing more of this than ever. I've literally done at least 100 tapes just this week. Yeah, just in the last week. I'm doing about 100 tapes a week for clients who have all of these old formats, all these old videotapes. And interestingly enough, they have more time than ever to watch them <laughs> because they're- Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so great. So getting those um, preserved because nobody has a VCR anymore. Even my sister told me the other day, she goes, we don't even, even have a DVD player. The only place we have a DVD player is in the minivan and we're not gonna go to the driveway to watch them. <laughs> <laughs> so we get all of that converted and then what that allows you, and, and here's some examples, right? Like on the digital side, like this is what I get from um, clients, you know, copying, downloading from all these different sources. And then what I do is I sort it into chronological um, folders with subfolders under here, but photographs by their very nature, they're like a capture of a moment in time, right? So mm -hmm. there's all sorts of different ways to sort them. Having done millions of photos a year for a long time, um, chron chronologically is the best way to do this. And it doesn't mean you're gonna be perfect. If you can't remember, mm -hmm. you know, it's fine, but we, we wanna sort them chronologically. Um, and then the other thing that I do with files is, you know, they have all these names, like super useless names, IMG, DSC, blah, blah, blah. They don't mean anything. The other thing I do with files is I batch rename them and I'm not doing this one at a time. I'm not that fast. There's software, free and cheap software out there that will batch rename files into something like this, where you have the date, the subject, and a, just a sequence number. That way, every file in your whole archive is sorted chronologically. Wow. It's unique, right? You don't have any duplicate file names. This, that's not confusing. And everything's self-explanatory. So if you look at this or you email it to your mother-in-law or whatever, this is going to make sense even before they open it. Um, mm -hmm. Just makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we, we can talk about the details here. I'm kind of going high level. but No, I love, I love this. This is... But this I didn't even know people. you could do something like that, that there was, you know, software yeah. out there to do this. So yep. great. So that's like a little glimpse into what a digital project looks like. And, and the mm -hmm. end goal, here's really like the, the vision, right? At the end of a project, all your photos are going to be sorted, right? So that means everything's deduplicated and all the duds, or the, if I can say it, like the junk, you know, the pictures of the inside mm -hmm. of your purse, the pictures of your index finger, <laughs> Like all of this, the, the price of broccoli at Costco, like all these things that are either just duds you don't care about, all of that stuff's gone, right? Um, it was convenient at the moment, but your grandkids don't want to know what you had for breakfast, right? So we're going to toss those. Mm -hmm. So we purge all that stuff out. The, sec the next thing that I do on a client project is I add what are called tags or keywords um, so that I can find things. Because even if it's like all in one place, um, being able to find it is really key. Because if you can't find mm -hmm. it, then you can't enjoy it, print it, share it, post it, whatever. Um, those are little baby pictures of me a few years ago. Um, but the, <laughs> as an example, I'm just searching for like Adam Infant. And I find, I find the photos I want. Uh, the last two parts are when it's searchable, then it's shareable, right? Uh, when it's Throwback Thursday or Flashback Friday or at somebody's graduation or anniversary, um, you can put your fingers on those photos, print them, post them. It's so much easier. And then because everything is um, consolidated, gathered in one place, it's secure. When your photos are in like nine different places, you can't back that up, right? You, uh -huh. You're not even sure if you have one copy, much less two copies. Um, so I work with clients to get it all in one place, make it sorted, searchable, shareable, and then we back it up. We put it in the cloud so they can access it anywhere. And that's kind of the goal, right? That's the vision. Um, I'll just mention a few other things, then we can get to conversation and question. This is the kind of stuff I get from clients. This is a, this was only a, an envelope. And sometimes I get like a car full of stuff, but we get physical photos as well. And this is a real project. This is the stuff that's on the left. All these photos 
no exaggeration, it filled the minivan. I had to I had to put the back seats down. Um, oh we filled a minivan with photos spanning uh, back to the 1880s. And then we scanned them, sorted them, uh, tagged them, you know, with all the searchable information. And then we got them into nice archival storage. And I love how that looks and feels on the right. This is the kind of stuff that, that we do. Um, Here's another little project. This was a family uh, that lived overseas for many years in the Air Force. So lots of old slides, got those scanned, and then they could share them with family. Um, and then we do the same thing with videos, right? Videotapes, all sorts of wacky formats, VHS, beta, the little cam the little camera tapes, all that stuff. We, we digitize those, we date them, we name them so we can find them and enjoy them again. Same kind of thing. So. Um, that's the gist of it. The last thing I'll mention, just the last slide, is a high-level framework. And I think this is really key. Uh, Sam was kind enough to put a link at the bottom of the Crowdcast screen there to a page on my website where you can get a free download. It's a, a PDF that gives this overall framework. So you don't have to take notes, by the way. You can get, you can get the PDF. <laughs> the PDF takes you through these five phases. Number one is gather. Every project starts with gathering. Because if you do a little bit, and then you find some more photos, do a little bit, find some more photos. It'll work, you'll get there, but it's not gonna be efficient, right? So you just wanna gather everything, whether it's digital or physical or both. It's like time to commandeer the dining room table. You're not gonna have anybody over for a while anyway, right? Um, <laughs> go to town, right? Get it all in one place. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be a more efficient process. The analogy I use is if you had somebody come over to your home and paint, say, the living room, clean up, go home, and then the next day you called you called them back and said, uh, I'd like you to paint the kitchen today. And they come back and they do it all. They clean up, they leave. And the next day, okay, now the basement. The painting crew would be like, you're crazy. Like you're spending so much more money and time having us go and come and back and forth. If you just plan to do it all at once, it's going to be more efficient. That's the same reason we gather photos. So you know what you're dealing with up front. Um, the next phase, you gotta preserve them. And so with the physical photos, that's the scanning. You wanna get a good high quality scan with um, digital files that, that a lot of times can be like converting old formats and things like that. Um, the next phase is organizing. And this is where we, again, high level, but we sort them chronologically and most of your digital files have dates in them. They might not all be accurate, but probably pretty good. Um, and you can use software to sort them uh, by date. So they start to make sense, right? You don't want like 20 years of Christmas together. You wanna know what was 1988, what 1989, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also where we do the tags and we, we tag things that are important for you to search, right? People, places, major events, that's it. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, vacations, Yosemite National Park, you know, whatever the things are that your family does. Um, and then that sets you up to share. And that's the whole goal of this, right? Um, you can enjoy and share your photos however you want. Print them. Uh, and print find, them. locate. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, turn them into books, turn them into slideshows, post them, you name it. Um, and then the last part, this is like a little secret to all of this, is you're not done. Even when you're done, you're still not done because you're probably going to keep taking photos. So there is some maintenance built into that, and I don't want you to be surprised. But then you've got a system, right? You've got uh, Sam, you mentioned you love systems. I'm the same way, and I do it with photos. So we get a system, we sort it chronologically, we delete the duds, and then you just keep doing that system. You maintain and then it's very manageable on a regular basis instead of super overwhelming, like, holy cow, how do I tackle 40 years of photos, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's the gist of it. Let me stop there. There's probably tons of questions. I love it. Um, there is. We, we're, we have almost 30 questions right now, but I couldn't help but as you were talking, it's no matter what niche we're in as, as an organizer, it's yeah. the same thing. It's mm -hmm. the same process every time. You have yep. to gather everything together to make decision. How much? How many duplicates do I have of this one thing? And mm -hmm. organizing it, getting the duds out, like maintaining. You know, ma maintenance is a big part of organizing. So yeah. just it's the same kind of thread that's woven through every niche as an organizer. We yep. same thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. So let me, so, let me pick go up, ahead. one other thing, and this is very parallel to the work you do. Um, it's okay, for example, to get rid of that t-shirt from college that you have great <laughs> memories about, but it's threadbare, right? You can do, you have the same permission with photos and that can feel like anxious, it could cause anxiety. Um, right. People can wonder like, am I allowed to do that? Or is that bla like photo blasphemy? You're allowed to throw away photos. Um, um, yeah. I keep most of mine to be fair, but if there's bad photos, there's duplicates, there's doubles, like it's okay to get rid of those. And then you have less to organize. Mm -hmm. I love so it. Give that permission up front. Right. I love that. So, okay. I, the one thing is I, everybody's coming to us from a different place, right? So yeah. for, and I'm just speaking like for my clients on behalf of them, like I have families who are just getting started and they've got young kids. So they only have their own photos that they've brought into, you know, they've, they've had throughout their life and now they're just starting. So they're, they're at the starting point. Like yep. what's the best way to get started there. Yep. And then you have clients who were pre digital and then they're in the digital and they've got photos boxes that have come down from other family members. Yeah. There's, there's such a range in there and it's how yep. do you, how do you get started? Yeah. Right. Yep. No matter where you're at. Yeah. So great question. It's a perennial question. So what I would say is, so in addition to organizing photos, which is most people's like nightmare, they don't want to do this, but um, the, uh, it's just because it's challenging. The other thing that I do for fun that most people think is crazy is I run ultra marathons. So I run 100, 200 miles for fun, right? Not everybody's idea of a good time. The reason, the reason I mentioned that is because organizing photos, and running really long distances are kind of the same. You set your goal, and that's why I wanted to start with the slides, and then you just take the first step. Like, you don't run 100 miles. You run one mile 100 times. That's kind of how mm -hmm. we break it down, right? So you start, you take those baby steps. So the question is, where do you start? Um, a couple different ways to think about that. One is start with whatever's important to you right? If your grandmother's photos are the most important, do that. Um, I've worked with clients whose parents are declining because of dementia, and they want to get those stories, share and enjoy those with their folks. Um, so start there. That's fine, right? Um, other, other clients I work with have a lot of digital files, laptops that are a little flaky, and they're concerned about backups, and that's what makes them anxious. So we start there. So start with whatever is important to you and also recognize that you can't do it all at once. Um, mm -hmm. If you're not sure, if you're like, I don't even know, like his advice isn't helpful to me, here's what I would say. Start with digital because in a way they're the easiest ones to lose and they're the, the it's the way to make the fastest progress. We can, we can right. get, a, we can make a lot of progress quickly and you'll feel like, yay, I'm, I'm getting a hold of this and your confidence is going to grow, your peace of mind is going to grow, and then you'll have the, the momentum to finish the rest of the project. Right. That's great. And for people who, again, going back to my clients, because a lot of them are families with young kids and not a lot of time, is it okay if they're just busy to say, at least let's gather and keep our photos gathered until we mm -hmm. do have the time? And um, maybe what can we be doing now with the new stuff coming in to kind of keep it at bay a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the gathering can take a while. Um, I, mm -hmm. it, it, it sounds simple, but you get into this and it kind of snowballs and I'll have clients where I've worked with them for a year, year and a half on big projects. And we're like, we're almost done. And the client will say, a little sheepishly, um, you're not going to believe this. And I'm like, no, I'm going to believe this. Let me guess, you've got another shoe box or you found something yeah. in a drawer or in a fridge right. magnet, whatever, right? So yeah. that's totally normal. I'm not surprised. Um, but yeah, really focusing on the gathering up front. The more you do that um, mm -hmm. and getting those kind of safe, they're not, like the print photos aren't really safe until they're digitized, but I would mm -hmm. prioritize the gathering and then focus on the scanning through pres uh, as a preservation tactic um, would be a great place to start. Okay, 
That's great. Love it. Yeah. Okay, so th- should we start with some questions no, here? Say, whether they're yours or from the, uh, I'll let, uh, hopefully you can wrangle I, this I can, lot of questions. I could keep asking questions, but it's yeah. it's about them. So we've got to, sure. okay, so let's see. What is the best place to start if you have 20,000 digital photos? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Wait a second. What's the best place to start once you have your 20,000 digital photos ready and your printed photos in boxes and your old albums all in one place with the goal being putting everything digital and then making photo books from all the favorites? Yeah. Um, Well, congratulations. You've made more progress. That's a big job. Yeah. Um, I would say you made good progress. If I heard it right, it sounded like 20,000 digital just for yes. comparison. Um, not that this makes you better or worse or anything, but just as a benchmark, my average client has about 50,000 digital files. Um, some of them have less, some of them have many more. Some of them have hundreds of thousands. Uh, I think my biggest client was about 7.6 million digital files. So um, everybody feels like they have a lot and, and it is. Um, with that project, I would um, basically decide whether you want to focus on the physical or digital first, what your priority is. If it's physical, I'd get it scanned. Either do it, and we can talk about scanning. I'm sure people have questions about that. Do it or get it done. Um, you can do it yourself. It's not rocket science, but it could take you like a decade. Like with a lot of photos, it can just be tedious and take a long time. On the digital side, if you decide to focus there, I use Adobe Lightroom Classic. Um, it's an Adobe application. It's very popular, um, but I, I use software to just help me sort that stuff chronologically, um, put it into folders, and start making sense of it, so that I know when I want to find, you know, our oldest um, child's, you know, preschool photos. I know that I can do the math. He was born in 2001. That's about 2000 four or five, I can start to find what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, let's see. Once all of your photos are digital, should we keep the hard copies of individual photos and negatives? Yeah, um, I do. Um, Again, I'm generally a purger. There's not a lot of stuff in my home, but I do keep photos. And there's some things that help keep those photos after they've been digitized. One is that um, all those double prints that you got for a penny that you never used, I toss right. the doubles, right? Some, like sometimes by the box full. So toss the doubles. And then the other thing is once you have uh, sorted and purged and scanned those physical photos, you can put them in some nice archival storage that they take up a lot less space because the, the storage is efficient. And so oftentimes when I return physical photos to my clients, the physical storage is literally like half the space that it came mm. to. Me. Um, so I do recommend keeping them. And then the other recommendation, when you keep, if you keep those photos, keep um, your photos should live where people live, right? So what I mean by that is nobody's living in your garage, nobody's living in your attic, your basement, your crawl space. Keep them, you know, in a main floor, in a closet. Uh, not near a water pipe or any, not under the bathroom tub or anything like that, and keep them off the floor in case there's a rodent or water or a leak or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah, let your photos live with where the people do. I love that. That's great. Okay, what is the best way or platform to combine all digital photos? I currently have a few older laptops that hold photos from the past 10 years or so but I don't know the best way to go about retrieving them all and how to integrate. Yeah, so a great question. And it's where you start, right? It's that first phase of gathering. And so what I would do is either from Amazon or Staples, wherever you buy office supplies and tech gadgets and stuff, go get a hard drive. And for most people, unless you have a crazy amount of photos, even a one terabyte external hard drive is gonna work great. It'll cost you 50 or $60 get a hard drive and start gathering and copying that from all those devices. That's what I do with my clients. It's the very first thing we do, first meeting. Um, And so you can do the same thing with your photos, copy them from all those old computers, the thumb drives, the C, and by the way, like terrible secret here, CDs and DVDs, they do not last nearly as long as you think. About 15% of the, the optical discs I get from clients, they don't work anymore. 
So prioritize wow. those, copy that stuff, even though it's digital, it decays, copy that stuff to an external hard drive. And if you're really smart, get two because you need a backup, right? You don't want to do all right. this work and then have that hard drive die. So probably right. get two, spend a hundred bucks, gather them and then copy them. And that's, that's where I'd start. That's great. I know somebody is probably going to have this question down below and yeah. it was something we sort of touched on with April Merritt last week, but what yeah. would you recommend for online backup Yeah, and keeping so, them safe besides a hard drive? Yeah. Good, good question. So I, um, I, I watched April session. I appreciated that a ton. She and I were like on the same wavelength with a lot of stuff. And I liked her recommendations. Yeah. Here's, um, Here's the distinction I, I would make, and I think April may have done this as well. Access, like digital access to your photos and backup are not necessarily the same thing. And so I don't mean right. to make it too complicated. I love um, that. I love that point too. Yeah. So for example, like people use Google Photos, Apple Photos, Amazon Photos. There's all these services that are like free to cheap. That's fine, but don't trust it for backup. Like if you read the legal terms, you're on your own. And, mm -hmm. and you should be mindful of that, right? So in addition to hard drive backups, I really like Backblaze. Um, it's very affordable, it's automatic, and it's unlimited storage. Like, I, I can't think of anything better. Like, and I, yeah. I'm, I'm not getting paid by them, I just like the service. Um, so yeah. Backblaze is great for backup, but then I would, but it's not good for access, right? So I use something like SmugMug or Flickr um, so that I can have all my photos online. They can be secure, like not everybody has to see them. I can password protect them if I want. And, and then I can access them anywhere. And I set this up for my clients all the time. So if they're on smartphone, iPad, web browser, grandma's computer, like whatever, wherever they are, right. if they have internet access, they can access a hundred years of their family photos, but they're not gonna be all on their phone. They just wouldn't fit. So, so those are right. a couple recommendations. Love it. I love Backblaze too. I think they're yeah. one of our NAPO uh, companies, partners. Yeah. 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 They're awesome. Okay. So let's get to the next one here. Um, hello from Alaska. My question, when working on a large scanning project, do you recommend doing all the scanning first and then editing and adding metadata or doing it in batches, scanning one batch, editing metadata, then moving on to the second batch? Yeah, great question. So, and I'm answering this as a professional photo organizer scanner, but my angle is I pretty much scan everything. Again, it's, it's more efficient. If, if I go back and forth between a bunch of tasks, it's just not gonna be as fast. Um, so I will go ahead and just plow through scanning 4,000, 10,000. I'm, I'm in the middle of a 20,000 scan project right now, 20,000 negative, wow. just getting them all scanned. That said, don't do 20,000 and not check. Like you've got to have some quality control in there because you don't want to make a mistake and realize it at the nah. end. So even if you follow my advice, you know, I'm checking my work as I go. I'm checking focus and quality and resolution and lighting and all of that stuff as I go. That'd be a bad, if you made some little mistake, that'd be a bad one to fix. Yes. Oh, it's a great yep. point. Great point. Okay, um, from Diana, what is the best way to sort through photos with the wrong date? Is visually the only way to determine where they go? Yeah, um, photos with the wrong date. So here's, here's the way I would tackle that. I would take those photos and I would sort them by date. And again, I use Adobe Lightroom Classic. There's other software that will do this. Um, I use the software and the software sorts it by date for me automatically and puts it into folders by year and month and date, and however you want to do it. Here's what I found. Um, there's two categories of photos where the dates are screwed up. Sometimes they're just totally screwed up. So it's like 1904 and you're like, not out of a digital camera, it wasn't, right? That's going to be more tedious and you're going to have to just look and guess and try to figure it out. Oftentimes, there will be large batches of photos where it's wrong, yes. but there's a pattern to the wrongness. And what I mean is you set the date wrong by a year or a time zone or whatever. And so this came to me when I'm working with a client, I had, um, I saw Christmas photos of them in Atlanta and Chicago on the same day. 
And I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. Like they, they, they couldn't, they didn't do that. And what I realized was for like two years, she had the date wrong in her camera. But what it allowed me to do is I was able to see that pattern and I'd say, oh, here's all these photos that she took with that Nikon camera that she got for a while. And I could take all of them and isolate them and like shift their dates in batch instead of like one at a time, a thousand times. Hopefully that makes sense. So, so see what dates it's giving you and you might be able to start to see some patterns that make it simpler to fix. That's great. Okay, let's see. This is from Wendy. My mom had about 50 photo albums that are the sticky backing kind. I totally remember. The yes. <laughs> Would my first step be to remove all these photographs from the albums and then scan them in. I, yep. I know not to put them back into these albums. I am Good. getting experience before getting my business up and running. Thank you. Yeah. Great question. So let's talk about these albums that are like the worst invention ever. Um, they, they are often called either uh, magnetic and there's nothing magnetic oh. about them. It's just adhesive and it's bad right. for your photos. Um, Sometimes I've heard people call them magical albums and there's nothing magical about them. Um, so here's what I would say. Get those photos out of there as soon as you can, as long as you don't damage the photos. So mm -hmm. um, some of the tricks that a photo organizer would use would be to use like a craft spatula to get under the photo mm -hmm. and pry it up. The other thing you can do is get unwaxed, unflavored, you don't want minty photos or cinnamon photos, unwaxed, unflavored dental floss. And you can work that behind the photo to separate it from the adhesive. And then just make sure you keep everything together because the photos that went into that album, they were probably put in at the same time to tell a story, to talk about a vacation, things like that. So there's probably some sense of organization there. Put them in envelopes or boxes or something, at least temporarily, together so they still make sense together. Um, and then, yeah, my next step would be to scan. Okay, that's great. I totally remember those. I had some of them. Yeah, totally I think we all did. Myself right now. <laughs> well, and, and actually, Stan, let me let me mention one other thing briefly, um, just to to preempt another question. If we go back mm -hmm. even further before those sticky adhesive albums, you may have really older family albums that were like black and white prints on the what looks like black construction paper that's really yes. more of an old antique heritage album yeah i love those i would say don't don't try to take those apart you're going to damage you're going to destroy the book and you're probably going to damage the photos um mm. it's best to just leave those there um store them in archival storage but i scan those as is because it's just too destructive so just mm -hmm. a little bit different case, and I just don't want people to yeah. be confused. Love that. Okay, this is from Jen. Um, I have many boxes of loose prints of my family and kids that I've taken over the years. There is no rhyme or reason mm -hmm. to them. Do yep. you have a suggestion for where or how to start to organize them? What is the easiest way in albums, in storage boxes, etc.? I've turned into my into my own mother. There you go. So this is kind of a I love Jen. Question. Hi, Jen. Yeah. So it's a great question. And I have kind of a, maybe a surprise answer to it. Um, take all of those photos and turn them over. Don't even look at them. Turn them over. And what you're going to do with them is I call this like uh, not organizing. This is what I call like pre-sorting your photos. So the first thing you do is sort by size. Like put all the 8 by 10s together. And then here's the other thing. You're going to put four by sixes together. And if you remember like the three and a half by five and a half or the three by five prints, most of the photos in the eighties were like three by fives. More recent are four by sixes. Just by sorting by size, you're gonna pretty much get them in the right decade without oh, wow, even thinking about trick. it, right? That's then incredible. You can do another pass, keep going. So let's say you have all the four by sixes. And again, you're not looking at the fronts, you're just looking at the backs. Look at the paper markings. There's, there's going to be paper markings on the back. Some of them will say Kodak. Some of them will say Fuji. Some of, will, some of them will say Konica, right? Different manufacturers. When you sort those by those marks, some of them will have dates, but that's rare. Normally, they're just marks and brands. You sort those, and then when you turn those over, it's like magic. It's like, wait a minute. All of these are like pretty close. It's not perfect, but without too much brain power, you can do a lot yeah. of sorting quickly. Well, 
and without getting sucked into, you know, you're looking at the photo. Right. What a great tip. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, and that uh, is a helpful trick for me. I do that with clients all the time. And also because I, I love my clients. I love their photos and we totally connect over them, but let's be honest, I'm a little bit more detached than they are. And so I can have more decision-making kind of power and speed in that, um, which, which helps the process. So don't get lost in your photos. If you do, you'll never finish, right? Kind of right. step back and say, I got to get this done, right? And what's the, the cool thing is, is when you're done, you'll be able to enjoy these, but just don't enjoy them while you're organizing or you'll never finish. That's great. I love that. Okay, so then once she's done that, what then would be the recommendation? Would you put them in a storage box? She was wondering what brand, if we were going to go with a box. Yeah. Um, um, or do we put them in albums? I saw your boxes in your slideshow, and I've worked with those as well before. Those are great. Yeah. Love those. Yeah, there's a lot of companies, um, Archival Methods. Uh, mm -hmm. Their website is archivalmethods.com. They make great boxes. There's other vendors. Um, they're a little bit, they're, you know, they're going to be more expensive than the cardboard boxes you get from, you know, your craft stores and stuff, but not, not crazy expensive. Um, that can be a good long-term storage. My recommendation is after you get them organized as well as you can, get them scanned, I would put them in boxes. And then what I would do is I would make my new albums and photo books out of the scans because it's going to be so much faster. And if the kids kind of like rough up the photo album a little bit, you're like, oh, well. Like no big deal. Yeah, you, know I mean? right. you don't have to treat it like it's super precious. You can you can enjoy it. You can leave it on the couch. Like that's where it should be. It should be in your life, not in a box or in a hard drive, right? Um, Absolutely. So so reprint them. It's not that expensive. Print a nice photo book. Enjoy it there. And then when you store the originals in a nice archival box, again, it's going to take up so much less space than those big albums used to. Mm. Love this. Adam, you're awesome. Yeah. Okay, what program do you use to batch rename files? Yeah, so um, I do all the batch renaming in Adobe Lightroom, but um, if you're not ready for that or whatever, um, there is um, a software utility called a Better Finder Rename, um, and that's for Macintosh. And then the same company has a sister product called a Better File Rename, it's the Windows version. It's pretty inexpensive. I think it might be 20 bucks or something like that. And you can do some really intelligent batch renaming um, in there. One other option that I forgot about that's free is uh, a product called Adobe Bridge. You can sign up for like a free Creative Cloud oh, yeah. account and then get the free Bridge software. It's like a file image browser. And it has really powerful batch renaming as well. And it's totally free. It's Mac and Windows and it works great. That's, that would actually, for free, that'd probably be my best recommendation. Okay, wonderful. Let's see, can you discuss transferring video format to digital format? Absolutely, so um, if you can see it, you can convert it, right? Like any kind of tape format, super eight reels, you name it, you can get it converted. But here's the catch. A lot of us, um, maybe in the 90s or in like the last 10 or 20 years, a lot of folks had the old VHS tapes and stuff, they had them converted to DVD. The sad news is, is those most of those actually, if you turn them over, you look at the bottom, they tend to have like a green or a blue or a purple color to them. The reason they are that color is even though it's a digital format, that color actually comes from organic dyes that are used to record the data. And because it's organic, it's going to decay. And so... Um, that's a priority. You got to get those converted. And so I actually used Handbrake software. It's free. Um, Mac, Windows, no problem. You can download this free Handbrake software and Handbrake will convert your DVDs um, to an MP4. There's different formats, but the best one is MP4 digital file. And you can store it on your hard drive. You can back it up. And that's the same video technology behind YouTube and Netflix and Hulu. It's like the world standard for video. Wow. I can't predict what's going to happen in the future, but I think it's the best format to keep stuff for the future. Um, and we could always convert it later if needed to, but but that's whether it's tape or DVD, get them both converted and and enjoy them again. Because nobody's, again, nobody's got a 
VHS or a beta player to see that stuff anymore. My office is full of them because I need to convert all that stuff, but they're right. pretty hard to find. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Right. That's great. Okay. What is the best way to tag photos? I worry about starting with one system and then technology changing. So I haven't yep. started. Um, I don't know who you are. I could kiss you. It's such a great question. I love that question because, and I mentioned this early on, this is going to be a tedious project and you only want to do it once. You want to yes. do it the right way. So my warning to you, this is, this might not be my most popular advice, but I got to break the news to you guys. If you use software like Apple photos or Google photos, um, they have tagging and honestly, they even do like automatic tagging. It's like magic, right? But here's yeah. the problem. The way they do their tagging, it only works in their system. So if they discontinue their system or you want to use a different phone or computer or platform one day or your grandkids in 40 years don't even know what that was anymore. They're like, what's an iPhone, right? Um, all of that's lost. So there is a solution to this. Um, and I like how the question was asked, like uh, kind of this long term approach. There's a standard that's been around for decades. It came from people working in newspapers and magazines who had to describe a photo and transfer it and stuff like that. That same technology has been working for decades. It's our best bet for something in the future. So you want to use standard keywords. Um, the, the, the technical term, if you're looking for this, is it's IPTC. I was hoping to not get that nerdy on this call, but that, that's the, it's not too complicated. That's what you're looking for. It's IPTC. And it's the stuff that press photographers have used. And it's excellent for your photos. And, and, and the other trick is you want it. Here's the real the zinger. You want to make sure that those keywords are embedded in your photos. You don't want them just in the cloud. You don't want them in a catalog or in a library. The best, the best practice, the recommendation from the standards organization is to have those keywords embedded in your files. So as they get shared, posted online, whatever, the it's kind of like the label, you know, when you used to take a photo and grandma would write something on the back, like the, the label was always with the photo. That's what we can do digitally. Um, we want to do the same thing. Love that. Love it. Okay. Can you suggest a good scanner for someone who has a lot of negatives to scan? Yeah. Good question. A lot of negatives. Um, so you've got a couple of price points. You could go get like an Epson or a Canon scanner for like $200 that would scan negatives and it'll do a pretty good job. Um, you could go up in price point. You could go spend like 800 bucks and get a better scanner. It's th and these are just a flatbed scanner like most of us think about and they'll scan prints and negatives and slides. Uh, you can do that. The catch is it's going to be pretty slow. So decent quality, but it could take a long time if you have a big collection. Um, you could, if you have a large collection, you're going to do a lot of this. I might bump up to a dedicated slide scanner. Uh, it's a different looking kind of contraption, but you might spend like a thousand dollars on that. And it's just going to do slides and negatives. Um, my system is a little bit different. It's much more high end and I actually do camera scanning. So I have like a 50 megapixel professional camera, custom lights and rigs. So I get really, really good quality scans and I can do it faster than you'll be able to with other devices. Um, most people are not going to buy that themselves, but that would be another option. Um, so that, that's a couple kind of broad ideas to think about. That's great. Okay, let's see. Um, we have, you can let me know at any time if you want to, we still have 40 questions to go. Okay. They keep coming. I don't want to overstate people's welcome, but it's my favorite topic, so I'm happy to be here. Well, I'm, I'm happy to keep going. I'm not going anywhere, so. Yeah, right. I have no just keep talking about there. photos. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Um, what photo scanner do you use? I know we just asked this question, but it keeps getting upvotes. Do you ever yep. use an auto feed scanner? Yeah, great question. So that's the kind of, I, I'm glad that came up. I didn't recommend that kind okay. of a scanner on the previous question because they were asking about like slides and negatives. So there are the high speed photo scanners. Kodak made them for several years. Epson has one or two models now. Uh, they're in about the $500 range. Um, they, there's some trade-offs. They're pretty fast. On the negative side, they only do prints. 
and they only do like normal prints. So if you have mounted prints, delicate things, big things, it's just not going to work. Um, and the other catch, this is my hang up with these, is they can be kind of finicky. So what I mean by that, when you're dealing with a lot of old photos, they're probably going to be a little dusty, right? There's going to be stuff in there. There's going to be like stuff from those old magnetic, those sticky albums, right? because the way the photo feeds through that scanner, all it takes is one little speck of dust. And then the, for the next photo, there's gonna be an orange line all the way across the scan. And so you you tend to have to, to clean those scanners a lot and it, I think it stinks. Um, so those are just some trade-offs. Um, and if you guys, um, can I, so Sam, I've been in technology a long time. I just joined Instagram. Can I mention my, little Instagram yeah, app. Of so chaos to memories, um, just the phrase kind of um, chaos to memories is my company name. And that's my Instagram account. Um, if you're interested in seeing what I use to scan, I'll post a photo of that later today. And you can oh, kind of compare and contrast and see what the options are. Um, but that's, I'll show you what I'm using. And that would be my comment on those high speed scanners. Fast, little limited and can be a little finicky. It can take a lot of maintenance to keep it running smooth. I'm so glad you're on Instagram now. Yeah. So what took you so my long? High kids. <laughs> yeah. What took you so long? Everybody needs you on there. Yeah, I've been busy, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Do you recommend Picture Keeper? Yeah, Picture Keeper is an interesting uh, device. If you're not familiar with this, yeah. it's some software for Macintosh and Windows, and it comes on basically a USB thumb drive. Um, the USB thumb drive for the storage, it's pretty expensive. Like you could go to Staples and buy a lot more thumb drive for a lot less money. But the promise is when you connect it to your computer, the software will fire up and go look around your computer and, and capture all of this. Um, it works so-so. I've tested it. I wasn't honestly super impressed. I had a, I'm pretty technical and I had a lot of technical issues with it, with it. Um, most people's photos are in pretty consistent places. They're in their pictures folder. They're in their desktop. They're in their downloads folder. Um, you probably have a pretty good sense of where to look. I would just get a hard drive and do it yourself. Like that's my approach. And I think anybody can do that. It's not, it's just copying files. You, you can do it. Awesome. Okay, let's see. What is an affordable way to store your photos? Mine are on external hard drives mostly and have uploaded some to, to Google Photos, but I know the resolution is not the best. Yeah, so, um, so hard drives- Would it be the are, archive, those archive boxes? Yeah, so um, if we're talking physical photos, I put them in nice archival boxes, it's efficient, and a lot of times they'll have like metal corners on them, so they're rigid and you can stack them and they, they look beautiful and they stay really nice. Yeah. Um, with the physical photos, I have nothing secret. I have hard drives just like you guys. Mine might be a little bit bigger, but hard drives are great for backup. Um, and you yeah. mentioned Google Photos, it's a very popular service, but again, there are some prizes, yeah. some surprises, like the tagging doesn't stick. Sorry to break that to you if that's a surprise. And um, once you get to a certain point, they're going to start compressing your files. So it's fine to share, but it's not a reliable backup because what they give you back is not what you gave them. Love it. And, 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 that, and that's where the, like, the Smug Mug and Flickr come in. They're mm -hmm. unlimited storage. They don't compress your files. And they're like 50 or 60 bucks a year. My general advice, if you don't even remember the companies I mentioned, remember this. If it's free, be skeptical of it. They're either, they're either like advertising off your back or they're compressing it or they're doing something with it. Like people don't give away something of value for free. Like it's just, it's an unsustainable business model. Like, so I don't mind paying a little bit every year to right. keep everything safe. Such a great point. So great. Okay, let's see. Hi, Kirsten, how are you? Okay, we would love to learn what tools Adam uses, both hardware for scanning, software for photo organizing and editing tools, and cloud backup. Also, yep. would love to know about whether you use facial recognition and what works best mm -hmm. for deduplication. That's, That's a big question. question. So, so if you wanna, we can break it. 
Yeah. So let me do some broad brushstrokes. So um, the link that's in the bottom of the Crowdcast there that goes to that workflow guide you can download, many of the tools I use um, are actually on that on that same page. So you can just check that out to like get into some of those details. Um, in terms of uh, the organizing and the scanning, again, my setup's a little unconventional. I, I don't use a scanner to scan. I use a really good professional camera and I attach that to my computer running, again, the same software, running Lightroom, because I can actually take photos straight to my computer and I can be confident that they're sharp, they're in focus, the color is right, the resolution's right. Um, so it's a faster way to do that. So I actually use, use Lightroom in that case. Um, there are um, plugins. I, I use a plugin for Lightroom to deduplicate software. One of my favorites is uh, Dupe Guru. You can find it. I forget the, the website, but it's Dupe Guru. It works on Mac and Windows, and it'll actually deduplicate not only photos, but like any files, your high school you know, literature paper, whatever you still got hanging around. It'll dedupe all of that and help clean it up. Love that. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I was running through these questions as you were chatting because sure. um, there's some good ones in here. Let me answer this one um, for accessing. First of all, you're welcome. This is like, I love bringing the experts to you guys. This is, you know, I even have these questions. You know, I'm in my own little niche over here doing in the trenches type work with clients and their stuff. I'm not a photo organizer like Adam. Adam, this is what you do. This is your area of expertise. So I'm happy to do this. It's helpful for me. It's helpful for all of you who are at home. And to access last week's sessions, all you have to do is go to the top left of the screen. Um, when you go into the series from last week, go to the top left, it'll pull down the schedule of all five days and you can access the replays there. Cool. Okay. Um, how can I overcome the paralysis I'm feeling every time I look at this giant pile of albums and envelopes of photos? It is so overwhelming. Yeah. I hear you. Um, so yeah. I looked at the domain name overwhelmed.com when I started my business several years ago. I thought it was a great idea. They were asking $183,000 and I didn't think it was that good of an idea, but I understand that feeling and it's super common. Um, what I would say, I hope I don't sound like a broken record. I would say, start with gathering, take all those albums, stack them up, like just stack them up in a place and let, let's do an, an experiment. Open one of the albums and just find an average, right? Let's say each page has like four photos on a side and each page has two sides, right? So that's like eight photos. And then you go through the album and there's maybe 50 pages, right? So there's like 400 photos, right? And then you're like, okay, so there's 400 photos. I have 10 albums, ballpark, not accurate, but just ballpark. Okay, I got 4,000 photos right there. Like five minutes, you start to get a grasp on it, right? Um, you start to have a next step. And then you could say like, how am I gonna tackle this? Am I gonna do it on my own? Am I gonna hire a professional? Um, am I gonna scan them all? Or am I gonna scan my favorites? You just start to make some of those decisions and just start to get your head wrapped around it and that's why I think gathering is so helpful because um, it's a place to start. Love it. Okay, let's see. I'm not familiar with this, and you probably are. Me Milio? Milio? Yep, yeah, Milio. Okay. Milio <laughs> appears to be a great organizing program to use for multi device access and organizing purposes. And I love that it is non cloud based but can sync with Amazon Drive and photos. I would like to know if anyone has had experience with them or concerns about them since they have been around eight years, but may not be as popular as some other programs? Yeah, good question. So I, um, I'm i not a Milio user. I have researched it and tested it a little bit. And um, it is a, it's kind of like a private cloud feature instead of in somebody else's cloud, it's kind of on your devices is the promise. I think the stumbling point for me and others that I've seen is the promise is lots of simplicity, but it's not always simple. Like it can be a little frustrating and confusing. Um, and I think that's honestly, to be fair, that's true of like the whole industry, right? That's 
we're all struggling with this. There's an explosion of digital stuff. We're all struggling to wrangle it. I think through the years, things will become easier to use and a little bit more mature and a little bit more permanent. Um, so that's that's a common struggle, but those would be some of my concerns about it. Um, uh, yeah, just based on some of my research. Okay, great. Um, do you ever run any promotions for your courses? Yeah, so for my courses, uh, we have done occasional promotions, like we did a Black Friday promotion and got gobs of people signed up. Um, I actually am working on some new courses in addition to what's on my website currently. Um, so stay tuned. Yeah, more, more awesome. coming. Great. This is a good question. I haven't heard this of this website in a while. I have pictures in Picasa. How mm. can I move them into a more, into a better location and where should I move them to? Yeah, so um, Picasa was the precursor to Google Photos. It was a standalone company, yeah. Google bought it and then shut it down quickly afterwards. Um, mm. It's been a while since I've done what I call a Picasa extraction or like a dabbling <laughs> from there. Um, but my memory is again, it's kind of faint, but it doesn't, I don't think it's complicated. I think there's just like a Picasa catalog or a folder system that you can just copy out of, um, and then copy it to something new. Um, again, like I, I use Lightroom, um, you could use bridge, just use something that embeds the metadata. So all that stuff isn't lost. Um, but I would move away from Picasa only because it's so old, like, I think it might have been discontinued a decade ago. Like, and that's normal that lots of technology has come and gone. So it's not like you made a bad choice. Like we all place our bets and some work and some don't. Um, but it would be a good thing to, to migrate away to, to something more, more current. Great. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I just received a box of films from my parents has have, um, and she's wondering about legacy box, if you would recommend yeah, that. legacy box. Um, I want to be careful not to be critical of others. What I will say is I have had multiple clients who spent a lot of money with legacy box come have me redo their projects, um, both on video and on scanning. Like they paid for it, but they concluded that the quality was so poor or so disorganized mm. that they had me redo it. So some of you may have and had a good experience. I hope so. Again, these are expensive projects. I hope, I hope it was a good experience, but I've had enough of those that you might want to keep looking at other options, maybe find somebody local or yeah. Okay, great. Um, is Lightroom a good program to use to organize photos? Um, I think so. It's all I use. Um, it works great. The only distinction I would make is there are two flavors of Lightroom. One is called Lightroom CC for Creative Cloud. That's like a cloud first version. And then there's Adobe Lightroom Classic, um, which is like the original version and is way better suited to the kind of organizing we're talking about and does things like the batch renaming. It does things like embedding the tags. So uh, it's it's the only software I use and, and works really well. It's it's actually a pretty good deal. It's ten dollars a month and it includes a full version of Photoshop. It is a subscription, which I know not everybody's crazy about, um, but it's 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 pretty. It's I think it's pretty reasonable and you get a lot for it. Okay, great. How about the best user friendly program to make a slideshow, for example, for a graduation? Yeah, slideshows for graduation. Um, one of my favorites is Animoto. It's a n i m o t o dot com. It's a website. You can try it for free. See what you think. It's got templates and music and stuff built in. What I like about it is it's browser based, and so you don't have to worry about Mac and Windows and differences, all that stuff. I can just recommend it to everybody, anybody, and it works really well. Um, and for some, you know for like a, especially a one-off like if you're not a professional video person who's going to do this all the time you just want to do it like occasionally it's pretty sweet so i would check that out okay great all right let's see when you are scanning are you setting up files beforehand or after all the scanning has been completed hmm setting up i'm not sure if i totally understand let me take a stab at it and then if it's unclear go ahead and repost um, I kind of do two things. On the front end, I am kind of doing some pre-sorting. So 
the person who asked the question about, I've just got a chaotic jumble, nothing makes sense, how do I do it? Mm -hmm. And I turn the photos over and I sift it based on size and paper type and things like that. So I'll do that up front to kind of pre-sort. Um, and then I do scan my photos in batches. Normally, um, like by the roll of film or something or by the set of okay. negatives or slides. And so I'll scan a batch, I'll put them in a subfolder and I'll do the next one. Because okay. again, if I scan 10,000 photos, nobody wants a folder with 10,000 photos in it. That's crazy, right? There needs right. to be some organization there. Um, so I do that on the post end and maybe, maybe that helps. Okay, great. How is um, Lightroom different from Apple Photos for organizing? Is it kind of back to what you were talking about? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think Lightroom is different in a couple ways, maybe three ways that are worth mentioning. One is it is cross-platform. So like full disclosure, I'm a Mac guy. Like I've, my house is full of Apple computers, but it's a, it's a cross-platform world. And I, you know, um, so I, I prefer software to recommend that's Mac and Windows. So Lightroom fits that bill. Um, I also like that it doesn't hide all of the photos in a, like a proprietary catalog or file. When I work with Lightroom, the files are just on the hard drive. Like there is a catalog, but it's just referencing the files. So you can always access your files at any time. There's no like hostage situation like, oh, how do I get them out? They're just there. Um, and then when I do all the tagging and metadata, again, all of that's embedded in the file. So even if Lightroom goes away or Adobe goes out of business or you wanna use some new software one day, no problem. Like you miss nothing and everything's in your files. Like I look at this as like your files are yours. They should not be held hostage to anybody else. Like they belong to you and they're important. So, um, so those are some distinctives. Okay, great. All right. Let's see how many more. We still have over 30 questions. Well, let, they let, keep coming in. Yeah. So uh, Sam, um, one, one other thing, I, I, there was a question before I forgot to answer. It was kind of that multi-part question about facial recognition. Um, right. I, wanted to, I wanted to mention that briefly because I think that'll be helpful for people. Um, I do use facial recognition, absolutely. It saves me a ton of time. It allows me to do more for my clients faster. So they get like more for less money. Um, and people are one of the first things you're gonna search for, right? Like you're not gonna search for beach umbrella or whatever, like you're gonna search for the people at the beach. So I do use facial recognition and here's a trick. Um, again, one, use software that embeds the names as normal tags. Otherwise, like if you do that with other software, it's all gonna go poof and go away one day. So use software that does it right. And then my other recommendation, especially if you're dealing with a large, if you're like in catch up mode and you're dealing with a large archive, start at the beginning because really good facial recognition software will start to recognize a kid and then they grow up a little bit and then they get in high school and then they get older and so on. And the software will actually like learn them over time and it'll start to recognize a kid whether he's six or 46 um, through, throughout the catalog, but it helps to go in chronological order instead of jumping around. So you kind of train the software and you'll get better results. Love it. Okay, let's see, there's a couple good ones in here I saw. Um, let's see here. Where was that one I just ran? There's quite a few in here that looked really, and you know, after we're done, you can always come in and comment on some of these yeah, questions too. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, um, I'm good on time. I'll just follow your lead, what you're comfortable for. Okay. I'm do a follow up session. I'm or, fine. Or what, but I'm yeah. fine. Totally good. Okay. You said to organize digital photos first. How difficult is it to merge physical and digital photos on your hard drive? Mm, great question. So, this is another one of these like tricks of photo organizing. I mentioned early on that I try to sort everything chronologically. And again, it's not perfect, but we do our best, you know, um, because we do that, that allows me to take, you know, a lot of people started shooting digital, like in the early 2000s, 2001, 2003, something like that. So we, if we start there, we do all that digital work and then we go back and we scan all the other stuff and then we just put them together. Right. And they and, and there's there was a time early on when they overlapped a little bit. We were shooting digital. We were shooting film. We did a little both. That normally didn't last long, but there was normally a little overlap. And that's OK. We just kind of interleave them and the whole system works because it's just based on time. So it's really, really easy to merge those into one big system. Great. 
Let's see here. Um, do you save as a PDF or JPEG? Mm. So uh, good question. For, yeah. for photographs, um, I almost always save as JPEG. It's just a good universal file format. There is some compression in it, which concerns people, but you can set the compression to very high quality. So you're not really losing anything useful. Um, I do use PDF, not for photos, but I'll, I'll tell you two times I use PDF. I also do a lot of document scanning for clients as well, like mm. old papers, letters, letters from the war, like stuff like that. So I'll scan those. And because those are documents, those make great PDFs. Um, and sometimes there will be books or scrapbooks or albums that have photos in it, but like the integrity of the book is important. So I'll scan that as a PDF. And one of the tricks that not everybody knows is you can scan a PDF and use Adobe Acrobat to turn the text into searchable text. So that won't work on handwriting, right? But like type oh letters and stuff like that. Like I had a client who was in the Peace Corps, another client who was a Fulbright scholar in India, and he was he was typing letters home back to the States. And so we scanned those like binders of them oh. and converted them to searchable PDF, which was super cool. That's, you must see some cool stuff. I do. I, I tell you one quick story. One of my clients is a direct descendant of George Washington. Um, before you ask, we have no pictures of George because cameras didn't exist then. But um, like her family lived, like her her family lived in places they don't even have addresses. Their their names, they're like national landmarks. Um, so super oh, wow. fun to see that, to see the photos. Uh, just super super cool. Oh my gosh, what a fun job! Okay, what resolution would you recommend scanning? Mm, good to? question. So. Great question. I'm surprised it didn't come up earlier. So there's kind of two categories of photos. The first category is what I would call like reflective. And what that means is just, it's a print, right? Light, re light reflects off of it and I, and I see the print. So for normal prints, uh, I try to scan everything at 600 PPI. A lot of people are say DPI, kind of the same thing. So 600 PPI for prints. And then there's the other category of what I call transmissive photos. And again, it's a little technical word, but it basically means I can only see it if I hold it up to the, to the light. So that would be like a negative or a slide. For those, I try to scan those at 4,000 PPI. And it, and it makes sense when you realize, like, why so high? Well, the photo is like really tiny. <laughs> so, I, so I've got to get like a density of data from that tiny little image. Um, so we scan a lot higher resolution for those. And then that allows me to not only retain all the quality from that, but it also allows me to like print it and scale it up. If I want to do big photo books or prints on the wall or whatever, I can do that. If I scan it too low resol resolution, I don't, I'm not going to get good quality. But the last comment is some people think higher resolution is always better. And that's also not true because if I scan, for example, if I scan a print at 1200 PPI, that actually, if you do the math, it actually makes the file size four times bigger. It's not twice, mm -hmm. it's four times bigger, and you're not actually getting anything useful. Like the photo's not gonna look any better. There are constraints to physics. So long answer, but 600 for scan for prints, 4,000 for negatives and slides. That's great. Um, let's see, there's quite a few in here. How about digital frames? Yeah. Anything, especially with Mother's Day coming up. I know a lot of um, a lot of people like to give that as a gift. Yep. So um, I am not a fan of digital frames. Um, I'll tell you why, but then I'll also make a recommendation of one. So I, like we're here on the computer. Do you know how many hours a day and a night I'm on the computer? Um, I love the work, but I get tired of screens. And I think there's an important place in life that it's not all pixels and light, right? And it's just, mm -hmm. that's just me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not a fan of them, I, but I love, I, my house is full of prints and frames and canvas, and they just, they're beautiful. We, I love them. So that's what I do with my photos. But um, that's not for everybody. I, I totally get it. If you're thinking about a digital frame, the Nixplay frames, it's N-I-X-P-L-A-Y. Nixplay makes some really nice frames. The designs are cool, the screens are good quality, and you can do some cool things where you like hook them up to Wi-Fi 
And so you can give them to your mother, mother-in-law, aunts, uncles, whatever, mm -hmm. and then you can like feed mm -hmm. the new photos so it doesn't get stale. So if, if you're interested, right. I would recommend checking that out. Yeah, that's a great one. That's awesome. We're getting a lot of questions still about a scanner, mm, photo scanners. Yeah. Um, you know, something that's affordable. Yep. Um, flatbed. Yeah, the affordable flatbeds are going to be like two hundred bucks. And 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 just to be clear, um, you have a couple of other flatbed options. You have the all-in-one printer scanner, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like your TV DVD VCR combo. None yeah. of it. None of it's great. Like. If you're going to scan right. family photos that are important to you, don't use the all-in-one. It's going to be super slow, and then you're going to be disappointed yeah. by the quality. The next mm -hmm. step up from that, there are pretty affordable scanners for like a hundred bucks. They're okay. If you're going to get a flatbed, spend two hundred dollars. Like bump up to that next level. The yeah. will probably be faster. The quality is going to be way better. It's worth spending that two hundred bucks. Um, and the only catch is it's going to take a long time, like scanning at 600 DPI. Um, whether you do it on the background on conference calls or you bribe your kids to do it or, you know, I don't know, like it, it's just tedious. So just be aware. And again, that's helpful. That's why I recommend starting with gathering before preserving, right? Get it all together, estimate it, count it and say, I have a thousand photos. This won't take that long. Or I have 12,000 photos. It's going to take me forever. Like, right, good point. I got, to, I got to figure out a different plan. So that's why the gathering, don't short circuit the process. Start with gathering. It, it really is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. There was a question in here, and then you can let me know if you want to stick around a little longer, but I thought that this was a good way to close it out if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody realizes that they cannot do this on their own, Mm -hmm. and they need to hire a professional like you. Yeah. How would they find somebody that they can rely on with really good quality work? And what are some things that they should ask or look yeah. into, you know, in the beginning stages of that? Yeah, great question. And so, also, how costly is it? What's the cost? Yeah, to do that? Um, great questions. Let me look up something online real quick just to confirm a URL. Um, Let's see here. I'm glad that you guys are enjoying this. I'm getting a lot of comments in the question area about how much they're enjoying this time. And yeah. so, I love it. I, I love helping you guys. Absolutely. Um, so a couple of recommendations in terms of finding um, a company that you would trust or that I would trust to work with, uh, visit a website called thephotomanagers.com. It's an organization Ooh. that I'm a part of. So thephotomanagers.com. Uh, we're mostly in the U.S., but we do have folks internationally as well. I correspond with folks in the Netherlands and the U.K. and Australia and stuff. So um, uh, South Africa, different places. So check that out. The photomanagers.com would be a place to uh, connect with somebody maybe closer to you. The things that I would ask for that I would investigate would be uh, scanning resolution, right? Make sure they're scanning at the resolution that I recommended so you don't get mediocre results and then feel like, oh, should I do this again? Did I get ripped off, mm -hmm. right? So good high quality resolution. Um, if you're doing any video conversion, I would ask how they deliver the files. So if they deliver everything to you on DVD, I'm like, oh, I'm, a little, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not thinking that's the best solution. Um, right. I would rather get digital files that are higher quality and I can do more with. If they, if they offer a DVD as like another option for viewing, I do that. Like I had some from my mom, right? We, I converted the videos, I got digital files, and then I made a DVD for her, which is nice. But the DVD, in my opinion, should not be the main deliverable. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, I would ask for referrals, just like, hey, could you just give me a name of one or two people that you've worked with? Um, because I don't want to make anybody scared, but like, they are your family photos. <laughs> like yeah. they're really important right. and precious. That's why you want to do this project. So I would just ask for a referral or two and say, hey, can you can I talk to somebody you've worked with and just hear about their experience? That's great. Is it costly or does oh, yeah. it depend on the volume? Yeah. So yeah, I forgot to answer that. So here's a vague answer, right? Um, <laughs> it depends on three things. I it get depends. the same question in my work too. And yeah. it's really it's a case by case because I need to see it. And right. it's also a part of like them being able to make a decision and how long that process is. And totally. 
I think you yeah. and I, Sam, have a lot in common. So one of the yeah. one of the one of the answers that photo managers, photo organizers like to use when somebody says, "Well, how much is this going to cost?" And I would want to know too, right? Like, I don't want to have this never-ending project. I I don't have never-ending money, so I I gotta know. Right? <laughs> um, it's a totally fair question. So when somebody asks me that, my common response is, "Why don't you show me?" Right? Like basically. I, when we're talking on the phone, I don't know, like whether it's a in-home visit or now, like we could do a Zoom call or something like that. You text me some photos or your pictures. It helps me ballpark. How much are we dealing with? It, because the three main variables are how much do you have? How chaotic is it? And how organized do you want it to be? Like, again, that's vague. It's kind of a, it's not a number. But those are the variables that you're playing with. And so it just starts with a conversation. And I tell my clients, like, I don't want them to be shocked. I'm like, this is probably going to be an expensive. Actually, here's what I say. I say, this is going to be an expensive project. Like, but I also think it's totally worth it. And I tell clients all the time, I, like new clients, I say, listen, most of my clients spend more money with me than they expected. And they're happy that they did. Like, they're not upset at the end. Like literally, like my delivery meetings, we hug, we cry. They say, I want to go to your business cards because this was so awesome that like, I want my sister, I want my neighbor, I want my golf partner. I want like, like it's, it's really important to them when they can find like the only photo that they know of their father, right? Or the photo of their brother that is no longer with them. Like that's important. It's really important. And so they are expensive projects. Um, but I think they're worth it. And so that's, that's one of the, some of the conversations that I have with clients. Yeah, that's great. Just, I'm curious cause I'm an organizer like you. Yeah. How many projects do you have going on at a time and how are you keeping everything? <laughs> I mean, if you have a, that's a lot, right? I mean, yeah. if you have somebody sending you a car full of, you know, like yeah. you said, you had to put the seats down in your car. Yeah. Are you just doing one at a time and then it's just focus on that till the end and then the next the next client comes in? Yeah. So do you think I have it all balanced? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's a challenge. Um, <laughs> I normally have a couple projects going at once and they normally fall into like three categories. Um, and it's good for my brain. I love freshness and variety. So right now I have a video project that I'm just wrapping up. It was about a hundred videotapes, got all those digitized and converted. Um, so a bunch of videotapes. Um, and then I've got a large scanning project, about 20,000 negatives that I'm scanning for a client. So I'm getting to do some physical stuff. And then I have a large uh, two digital, one and a half, two digital projects, one I'm just getting started. Um, so I can kind of like move around. I kind of float around. It kind of keeps my brain a little fresh. Um, and again, it, the work is tedious. And so being able to switch kind of just keeps it fresh. Um, and frankly, I've got so much work, which I love. Um, I think I need okay. to do like a wait list system or something because I, I do no marketing. It's like a terrible secret. I do zero marketing. People find me mostly word of mouth. Um, and well, yeah, what you do is a very specific niche and yeah. it definitely requires an expert. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I so I could see why you, you don't yeah. have to do any advertising. I don't want to scare people away from this, right? Like the whole reason to yeah. do this whole session is to empower people to think about like, how do I approach this? How do I do this? How do I tackle this? I don't want to scare people away from it. Um, but I also want people to be like sober minded of like, you know, there's a lot of technology. There's a lot of like organization thinking systems that I got to set up um, just to do it right. Because again, I want you to I want you to be super happy with it at the end and just love having access to all those photos again. Right. This has been so incredible. There are still 30 questions. Crazy. And if you want, I mean, I know time is yeah. precious, but we also have some time on our hands. Yeah. Um, if you want to go in and answer, um, because you can go into the question area and add a comment. Yeah, let's do that. Um, that would be a good option. Otherwise we could be here for another hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, that sounds great. So, 
Yeah, this has been, I can't thank you enough for joining us no, and helping you. answer some of these questions and take the scary part out and really pulling down to the foundation, like where do you start and giving us actionable steps and yeah. your workflow guide is so helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I did say I would, I would remind people to click that green link down below. I think the workflow guide will be like a good framework to remember the things we talked about. You'll see a lot of the details, the resolution recommendations for scanning, things like that. Um, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll find those in the guide and that could kind of be your checklist for like, how do I get started? Where do I go next? Love it. Okay. Yeah. Now we know you're on Instagram. Yeah. Cause you told us yeah. where else can we find you? Yeah, so um, so chaos to memories .com is the website. Chaos to memories on Instagram are those like the main places. Um, I have so much work that I'm like, hey, I gotta focus. I can't be everywhere, so that's that's where to find me. Yeah. And I work from home in Chicago, um, where the weather's not very good. I hope it's nicer where you guys are, but uh, yeah, Chicago's home. And I, I do work with clients all around the country. I actually just got my first client in France. I'm working with a new client in Grenoble. Um, so wherever you are, let me know if I can help or if I can steer you to somebody local. Um, the photomanagers.com is another great place to look and find, um, you know, my peers and friends, um, around the world and find somebody good to connect with. That is so great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I can't and thank you enough. I'm so excited. I'm so glad I found you on LinkedIn yeah, and we connected. Too. Absolutely. It's been really fun getting to know you. And thank you so much for spending over an hour with us. Yeah, almost, my pleasure. I can't believe we're at almost 90 minutes right now. That went so fast. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Here, here's what I'll say, Sam. Everybody, I don't know anybody who doesn't have this problem. Everybody has this problem, uh -huh. right? Every, yep. Whether it's physical or digital, everybody is kind of plagued with this to some extent. The yes. catch is it's urgent for very few people. Urgency comes in the form of, um, graduations, weddings, yes. sadly, sometimes it comes in funerals and health diagnoses. Like I, we see those as well. Um, so it's not always urgent until like the basement floods or, and, and that's part of my motivation. I've had, I've had friends, real personal friends lose their homes in fires, floods, hurricanes, and tornadoes. It doesn't happen to most of us, but it does happen and it stinks. And it's a, you may lose your stuff in your wardrobe, but you know, when I had a client from the Caribbean call and say, yeah, our wedding album is destroyed from the hurricane. It's like, it's too late. It, there's nothing yeah. I can do now, but let's get it while we can get it, while we have the photos when, and while we still have our memories. <laughs> like I still got my <laughs> mind for the time being. Capture those stories now um, so we can hold on to them. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And I'll hang and uh, look thank at some you. of the text chats, see thank if I can you. help with those. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. You guys have a great day, and I will see you guys next week. Awesome. Bye, everybody.